We're live with Dr. Gary. What's going on, oh, buddy? Man. I'm I am excited. Brian's been fired up all day, and we've been excited to record this uh, this little uh, sapien light, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that from a listener. You know, like Primal Light and Primal that I sell at Nose the Tail with the organ meats ground beef with the organ meats mixed in. Anyway, let's get into it. It's Friday night. It's time to get fired up. Dr. Gary had a long work week. I was going to start off with some stuff about cholesterol, LDL, mm. that type of thing. People send me their stuff. I do some consults sometimes just on general health stuff. And man, we got LDL screwed up. It kind of yeah. ruined everything for our country and our world. And I've done many podcasts about it. Dave Feldman, Ivor Cummins, Dr. Nandir Ali, Dr. Brett Schur, Dr. Seema Holtra, last three cardiologists, uh, first two engineers. Tons of content on that, but I was just thinking about how wrong we got cholesterol, but why it's so obvious. We never studied it in a correct way. No one, we never studied people eating human diets. No one ate a sapien diet and we studied them. We, we looked at people eating a food pyramid diet and then we're like, oh yeah, LDL is bad because yeah, if you're eating tons of sugars and grains and all this stuff, then of course it can be bad. And we have no context for what a good lipid panel would look like but Dr. Gary does and all the doctors that I interview my podcast do, and it's always the same. So before I go on, why don't you tell us what you see in your clinic with these lipid panels? Yeah. I mean, I think this is probably one of the most contentious issues and one of the most like popular reasons why a patient comes to me because they, they listen to all these smart doctors. They listen to people and look up the research on the LDL and then they go to their doctor and oftentimes their doctor just can't process or accept this kind of different interpretation or different understanding about the lipid panel. And there's, there's, you know, that's where the doctor patient relationship breaks down and patients are seeking, you know, people that are, that, that understand that are open-minded. So I see a lot of those patients. Um, I see two, two things I think that, that are, I, th I think are interesting clinically. One is I have patients that come to me with this complaint and they've been following a sapien diet. They've been on a low carb program. They've been eating plenty of animal foods and fasting all the time. And you see this pattern, the pattern of high HDL. Um, it's good. Low, very good. High HDL is great. Low triglycerides. Also good. Reflects low blood sugars also. And then their total cholesterol and LDL tend to not be crazy high, but although it can be pretty high, it's on the high side and it's definitely out of the reference range. And it's definitely higher than what uh, the traditional Western medicine doctor is comfortable with, if you will, or, or it's trained to sort of look at and say, oh, we need to address this. And while I think that most doctors do understand that HDL is good and having high triglycerides is bad, the, the reimagining of your assessment of a cholesterol panel is in the context of diet is, is what's required here. You have to think, okay, if this is a person eating this high fat, low carb diet, you know, and they have the super high HDL and this rock bottom triglyceride and, and their A1C is great and their fasting blood sugar is great and their other inflammatory markers are great, then I shouldn't be worried about the LDL and cholesterol. And I think that concept, that, that, that's a hurdle for doctors that are still anchored in traditional ways of analyzing the LDL pan or the, the lipid panel. Well, they, you need to re-examine the paradigm. So if something doesn't fit, it's either something's wrong with your whole paradigm or maybe something's wrong with the person. But when the person you're saying, you, you, when we were talking earlier, you're saying low CRP, low fasting insulin, low blood sugar, uh, what low A1C, everything good checks out. Good RDW. Yeah, there's all these other markers of metabolic health and you tend to see this pattern where they're all great. And then this LDL and total cholesterol are high. This red herring. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. And people are like, oh, we can't understand it. It's the LDL paradox or something. And it's, it's not great. a paradox. It's just, it's, you have the wrong understanding of how LDL works. And it's tough for patients. It's tough for people that do get it because there's not enough people that understand it. Or if they do, they're still trying to do the traditional recommendations. Well, so back to the idea that there was this one patient that comes to me already doing it. Then there's this other pattern that's also very clear and obvious is the unhealthy or metabolically damaged patient that comes to me, uh, whether they're seeking to change or we, we connect and we're able to like really make some changes. 
Um, this is again, the patterns you see, you see the A1C dropping, you see the triglycerides dropping. You don't necessarily see a change in the total cholesterol and LDL or, or a negligible one. And you see the HDL creeping up as they do more cardiovascular work and have a higher omega-3 fatty acid diet. Um, you also mentioned these other markers, and I think this is important. A lot of patients find out that, hey, a fasting insulin level is really, really sensitive to assess for um, insulin resistance, right? And, you know, sometimes you're not seeing high blood sugars. You're not seeing high A1Cs. You're seeing the insulin in a fasted state still elevated. It shouldn't be the case, right? It, when you're in a fasted state and you don't have a lot of blood sugar or you're making your own blood sugar through your liver, whatever, you, we all talk about that. The, the idea is that you should have a very low insulin. When that insulin is high, other markers can look normal, but that is a marker, an early marker that you're having metabolic dysfunction. You're having this hyper, you know, insulin resistance. Can I process. jump in? Because this is, it's so simple once I figured this out and why everyone's missing it. All the mainstream doctors are missing it because they're looking, they're not checking fasting insulin. No one does that. So CRP. They're just, looking at, they're just looking at, yeah, blood glucose. And so it looks normal, but the high fasting insulin means they're it, requiring so much insulin to make that blood sugar look normal. So when they just go check the normal blood sugar, they're like, oh, it's good. But no, you have this crazy insulin to, that's trying to bring it down. You got it, Brian. And and it's not normal. And there's so much pushback for patients that ask for a fasting insulin level if they want it checked because doctors don't know how to interpret it. Um, CRP is another marker to think about if, especially in someone who has like significant obesity, it tends to be elevated. And, and in the, when there is no infection, cause an infection will also make CRP elevated as a non kind of a non-specific inflammatory marker. But again, to this idea with the insulin, it's you shouldn't have inflammation. You, you shouldn't have this inflammatory marker like elevated. It, high CRP also correlates strongly with um, cardiovascular disease, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I even check a CRP and it's elevated, the lab and the printout even says, oh, this is the cardiovascular risk based on the CRP. So you know, but we shouldn't only be checking CRPs for people with infections and seeing. So we also follow CRPs like in the hospital uh, to see how an infection is going. If it's really, really bad, it's super high. And then as the patient's improving, it's going down. You're like, yes, we're doing a good job, right? So it's the same thing with obesity, specifically metabolic disease, diabetes. I see it sometimes, but the CRP marker is elevated. And as they lose weight, their insulin comes down, they're eating cleaner, they're fasting, the CRP marker comes down. Another great marker to use to expand our, you know, ability to, to also give people objective evidence. So when I have patients again with a normal A1C or something, and their lipid panel is not great, but their CRP is really elevated because they have a lot of obesity. I see that with young people all the time. And as they lose weight, as they exercise and kind of start feeling better, they also see the CRP marker coming down mm -hmm. and it's so powerful, right? For the same reason, like people like to check the ketones or, you know, use these different biomarkers to sort of track their progress because it's motivating. This is a blood biomarker that correlates with significant disease improving based on your mm -hmm. lifestyle. Holy cow, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just A1C. It's not just your blood sugar. It's not just your lipid panel. There's this whole like metabolic assessment one can do. And uh, if you know how to understand the results in the context, you can, you can really give people guidance. It's so important. And I always like to say, if there's a hundred things that, okay, there's 99 things that get better, right? You can walk into the office. You could, maybe there's 50 of them are on the blood panel that, you know, we named 10. You could say, oh, their waist to height ratio went down Their Their waistline there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I dropped like four pound sizes. Their energy got better. Their sex drive got better. Their mental sleep awareness, their sleep got better. Everything got better. So there's 99 things that got better. And the one thing, the literally one thing, and it's LDL. And right. then people are like, well, we got to use a statin. you got to get on a different diet. It's bad. It's blowing my mind that people have this cognitive dissonance so much. They can't, they just like, well, this is what I learned in medical school. This is the truth. This is all I know. And I, I just can't believe it. I want to talk about how crazy it's because we didn't ever study these diets. We, we've never studied a population eating a healthy diet, like a real human diet. Of course, we don't know what a but, good- But there is some data, right? There's like the new type two diabetes data, uh, you know, 
th those showed improvements in the lipid panel. I mean, there there is data now. It's well, there, just yeah. you're right. You're right. There is yeah, like the the study with Verda, and they did it. show people, and they probably mm -hmm. did have you know high high LDL and still, but we still have never had these population like big population level studies eating a meat based diet. So why would we? I I'm just saying. And we why won't would have those we studies. Know? And we yeah. won't have those studies. And I know there's people in our space doing like great work with Meat RX. Um, uh, with Sean Baker. I mean, people are trying to create the data. And I think that uh, while we can wait for it, the reality is it's very, very intuitive. It's, it's consistent with our physiology and biochemistry. Uh, there's plenty of, you know, n non sort of medical studies, but like understanding of lipidology that drives this under you know this this concept we didn't even get into like when you break down the lipid panel into more uh and looking at the particles uh in smaller pieces like the different kinds of particles and how we can interpret that to get an even better assessment here this is just discussing basic labs and how how disconnected we are from you know mm. well that from the modern day interpretation of you know that's what that's what yeah. we need we need to change this so yeah, you're also talking about look, LDL, you can look at, and if you have these small dense particles, mm -hmm. then that could be a problem. These are the things that we see drive atherosclerosis. But the thing is the people with the meat-based diets don't have these small dense particles. They have the, the better kind of LDL that we're learning are good. I mean, and people have high LDL that live longer. There, so we do have some of these studies that show in elderly people, especially women. They of course. Live and it's so myopic to think that high LDL, high risk of cardiovascular disease, low LDL, everything's good. It's like LDL is, is a multitude of these different fat particles that do a lot of things in our body. They're it's doing their job. Just, yeah, they're not just, and by, yeah, and they're not, it's like they're supposed to be there. Yeah. So, you know, why are they supposed to be there? Let's really think about that. Maybe they're anti-inflammatory particles. Maybe they're particles trying to heal inflamed epithelium and they're there to try to protect us. And yeah, that leads to disease. But if we heal the epithelium of our blood vessels, then the, then the fat cells don't. Well, doesn't to... it doesn't lead to disease directly? It's like they're responding to disease. It's kind of like right. with Alzheimer's, that the amyloid plaques. The amyloid plaques are trying to protect the brain. This is what we found out later. Is exactly. it's not the disease isn't the amyloid plaques. These are something that build up in, to try to protect it. The same thing with LDL. This is the way I understand LDL from all the great people I mentioned before is they're there trying to do their job. So the idea is don't damage your epithelium or endothelial yeah. lining, right? And th that's why having the high blood sugar and you know smoking cigarettes and all these other type of insults that actually are the problem. You got it. You got so. it. I mean, I, it's, I know, I, I don't know what else to say. People, people if, if you're listening to this and you, you, you get it and it resonates, share this. Like, like people need to, to, to really reimagine this and challenge physicians, challenge their providers to really rethink their approach to uh, the lipid panel for sure. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this, we're going to keep this one short, but go back and listen to the episodes I mentioned. Dave Feldman does a lot of work on this and talks about the new, it's this whole different energy model and that the LDL is just doing its job, doing energy. It has to do with the immune system too, that you know having this high LDL could help your immune system. And, you know, I think maybe it's part of why I don't get sick anymore, right? I haven't been sick in years, five years. It's, it's just not LDL. It's the whole thing, right? Again, it's everything. Yes. It's all of these markers showing that you have a healthy metabolic process and you can't just look at one mar marker and deduce that you will have a poor, bad diet and a bad metabolism. That's not when, how it works. There's when many everything many, else gets better. Yeah. There's many, many things. And that's why it's not, you know, you can never mechanize diagnoses like, what, what I do as an internal medicine physician is, is look at the, the whole clinical scenario. I look at the objective data that I have. I look at my experience with the patient and I integrate that and to, to make an assessment. And so, you know, whenever someone just sees a high LDL and freaks out or their doctor freaks out, it's, it's myopic. It's, it's not, it's not thoughtful. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we need when we look at all these labs and, and because, you know, prescribing someone a statin is not a benign process. Not, oh, here's a statin. Everything's great. It, you know, there's side effects to this stuff and you have to be thoughtful. Absolutely. And just to reiterate too, the, the triglycerides and the HDL, those are so important. So people should look at the triglyceride to HDL ratio. And if you do that ratio, it should be close to one to one. 
right? It would be good. Maybe it's like 80 and 80. And this is what I've seen. I've seen people where it's 0.5, where they have such high HDL, maybe it's like 90 and they have 45 tricks. Very good. Then I've seen people on their journey getting better, you know, and their, their HDL still maybe is low and their HDL is in their forties and their trigs are in the eighties, nineties, but at least they're getting to that one-to-one. So just know that is a measure of how insulin sensitive you are, which is a good thing, right? How you're, you're doing well with insulin and blood sugar, uh, the closer you get to one-to-one and that the LDL is something we just need to learn more about. And then last thing I'll say is that you have to, like you said, be thoughtful. There's all these different patterns. So if people are eating a bad diet and they have bad triglycerides and HDL and bad LDL, then LDL is bad, uh, you know, right? Because it's probably the wrong kind of LDL. So it needs to be said. Yeah. You have to know that not, we're not saying that just LDL is fine. So uh, there's a lot more context. Again, I'll repeat the people. It's Dave Feldman, Ivor Cummins, Dr. Brett Schur, Dr. Nadir Ali, and Dr. Asim Holtra. I did podcasts with all five of those people on peak human last three are cardiologists. Go back to listen to those and uh, yeah, share this with a friend, share it with family and um, yeah, eat some meat. We got a nose to tail, go see nose go see Dr. Gary evolve healthcare.com. He'll be your good doctor and uh, set the other doctor straight. <laughs> well, you said it all, Brian. Thank you so much. All right, guys. We'll see you.